Hello again, uh, welcome uh, to the Thermodynamics module, uh, lecture number six, uh, where today we're going to be looking at open systems, um, which is another feature that we have not yet considered. Uh, this far we've been looking at a closed system, so we imagine our system um, of mass, uh, we identify the properties, and we're thinking essentially about quasi-static processes, uh, practically processes which are very slow, uh, quasi-static essentially meaning um, that everything's in equilibrium uh, and you sort of move from one equilibrium point to the next. Uh, and this is essentially quite a slow process so that we had uniform properties of the system, temperature, um, pressure and energy and, and so forth. Uh, when we get onto open systems, uh, this is not the case. We're going to get onto this. The rate itself comes into into play, uh, which is uh, more practical, uh, if you like, and applies to typical systems that we see in everyday use. Uh, open systems, of course, are particularly important for turbines, compressors, heat exchangers, boilers, and, and such forth. So most equipment uh, that we could um, analyze um, tend to fall into open systems. Uh, so very important that we're able to um, understand it. The, the lecture I did is, um, is I'm going to look at the equations, really. It's quite a lot of them. They're all saying the same thing. Uh, we're going to get it to a very simple form, which is the form that we're going to apply on the course. Uh, but we're going to start off uh, from the general form. Uh, so that I do want to do then is just remind ourselves what, um, what uh, we've done thus far, as far as closed systems is concerned. And you may recall that we had... Uh, uh, from the first law, and it's sort of a general form, we have our energy equation where we're imagining, you know, we were imagining heat uh, coming into the system. So we had our delta Q, you may recall, and of course we had our W, uh, delta W. So these are differential, uh, in potentially small amounts of heat and work uh, being transferred uh, into and from the system. As you imagine them, it's quite small. Uh, so we had our, uh, from the first law, we have this equation, you may recall, DE was equal to delta Q minus delta W. So that was our first law, uh, where E is the total energy we brought in. Uh, we tend to be focusing on the thermodynamic uh, um, intrinsic internal energies more than the uh, mechanical, but just for completeness, with, we, we looked at that and we said, okay, for this case, we've got a fixed mass uh, and we call E, uh, lots of ways to write this thing, but U uh, plus uh, M, um, well, you could write uh, half V squared or half M V squared um, plus M G Z, how about that? Uh, was said was the height uh, of the system. So that was our total energy, kinetic energy, um, uh, our internal intrinsic energy, um, and that was the, uh, which we saw this as a sort of, on the left hand side we see in our, what the effect in the system is, uh, the properties, velocities, there's still things moving at a, at a given velocity here, uh, at a given height, and we've got our internal energy. And on the right hand side, we saw our transfers. So the interaction of the system with the surroundings uh, was given by, uh, given by this. Uh, we also had the integrated form. We, we argued, well, look, uh, this is all right for a, you know, a differential form as its uses, particularly when we've got quasi-static changes. Um, uh, things are changing very slowly. Uh, then usually we can relate our differential to these these delta terms, delta W and so forth, to um, to changes in the properties of the system. Uh, we displacement work, for instance, that's one, and we haven't yet looked at another one, but delta Q is one coming up when we get entropy. 
uh, there's going to be one for that as well. So this is quite useful for analytical type studies. Uh, but quite often we're interested in going from one state point to the next. And uh, we need an integrated form of that. And what we did is, OK, we can integrate this thing and say, look, the integral integrate between state point one and state point two of, of DE, uh, we've got that to be E2 minus E1. Uh, and that was the integral, the integral, let's do it in one go, delta Q minus delta W between state point one and state point two. And we wrote that as Q12 minus W12. So that was our integrated form. Um, of the uh, first law, and um, where e2 and e1, we just put a 2 on each one of these things, uh, or a 1, uh, to get the change in energy, and that was the transfer that you put into this thing, it's a numerical value, going from state point 1 to state point 2, and that's the work transfer, kilojoules generally, kilojoules, uh, so that's our uh, a difference form, if you like, of the of the energy equation. Uh, we also have the rate of form, you may recall. Now, this is the form that really we have to get to and utilise when it comes to open systems. But let's put through, this is the important form. So you may recall, I suggested, well, we can get rate forms uh, by a, a bit of nuance, but we, can, we said, look, this is what we do. We can see that DE is the derivative of E with respect to time dt, uh, and that's equal to when we're on this side of the equation. Uh, and bear in mind that these are not properties, uh, and the, the argument we put forward was, well, in that case, what is given is the rate, the rate of heat transfer. So q dot uh, dt minus w dot, that's the power, output from the system, dt, multiply by a little time, of course, that gives you a differential amount of energy output. Uh, or alternative written then, the dt is just vanished from this thing, and you get dE by dt was equal to Q dot minus W dot. So that was the rate form uh, of the closed system. There's a term missing. The, pro the problem with this form is uh, there's a term uh, missing. Uh, so it's nearly right, uh, but when it comes to an open system, it's not quite right. It's right for the closed system. Uh, now, when we come to open systems, uh, we need to rather move, rather than think about a system, we have to, in fact, think about a control volume. Uh, you may recall also uh, we could write this equation. Uh, so in a, in a more complicated way, d by dt, where we integrated uh, little e dm, you may recall, uh, over uh, at omega, it's the, uh, the system volume, uh, and that was equal to, uh, so that's that term, d by dt of that, that's what we meant by energy after all, it's just summed integrated over the mass uh, here we've got it um, just multiplying by the mass but we, we, we imagine it as a something varying uh, uh, across the system here we're allowing that to happen and then on this side we had it I think we had it as a boundary term gamma uh, which was q dot uh, da it's a boundary term so the area uh, so that's heat flux, uh, so that's um, per unit area, therefore, uh, that's what we meant by that term, rate of heat transfer per unit area, multiplied by little area, uh, and sum it up into some all the little areas up around the boundary, and that gives you this value. And then also I think we add uh, another term, a gamma, uh, and we add it as, as, a, as a dot product, attraction with a velocity. Uh, but we're not going to worry too much. Well, I'm introducing it and we'll, we'll, we'll see a particular form of this for the displacement work. Um, but we're not worried too much. This is slightly beyond the course, but this is, this is essentially what this really is. 
um, in a calculus sense. So this is the rate, um, the rate form of our equation. So when we go into open systems, uh, we tend to focus now on the control volume. So what I'm thinking about with my open system, we're thinking about the control volume. So imagine it doesn't look any different in a sense. And that's our omega, which is the, the region of space. That's what a control volume is. Gamma is our boundary. I could put a little CV on that to distinguish it, I suppose. Um, CV, uh, the boundary of the control volume. Uh, and what we're going to have in this, this situation, we're going to have mass coming in and mass possibly leaving. Or mass leaving and not coming in, or mass coming in and not leaving. So it could, you know, the, the control volume could grow. Uh, essentially, we're going to be looking at stationary control volumes um, rather than moving control volumes. So usually what we have is that uh, fluid, fluids coming in and fluids going out uh, in a situation um, uh, where fluid is not leaving, then there's the, there's a growth in the um, in the uh, in the mass in the system, so that can happen. Um, so it is possible that uh, one of these is zero, and the other one is non-zero. You fill in a bath, for instance. You imagine you fill in a bath with the tap, and your control volume uh, is the bath itself. Uh, then uh, water is entering the system, and uh, in that situation, you don't have it uh, exiting the system. Unless you pull the plug out and then you'll have it exiting. So there are situations where um, you don't have both of these. Uh, but this is mass. Uh, uh, and of course, with mass flow rate, uh, you have energy. Each, each The mass uh, that you bring in and have the temperature, it will have its own energy. Um, so it will be transferring energy in and out of the system. Well, there's a modification you have to make to... Uh, to this equation, to be honest, uh, or, or this one, They're both the same really. Um, and the modification, I'm going to put you what the modification is. This equation changes to this one, dE by dt. And we end up with another term, which is a boundary term, CV if you like, for the boundary. Uh, and we've got an energy, E, little e, specific energy, and we have a d dm dot term, uh, and that's equal to q dot minus w dot. So we get an extra term, which is our e here is equal to u plus half r v squared, v squared is velocity there, uh, square of the velocity on a dot product, v dot v, if you want to be precise about it, plus g z. So our specific energy, it's got the mechanical, it's got the intrinsic internal energy. And we get this extra term appearing, uh, which is absent from uh, this equation here. Uh, and also, I should mention, <laughs> let me make this, I put a little CV on the E here. And what I mean by that is the energy in the control volume. Okay, so, uh, so a slight distinction, uh, but not much of one. Um, that, uh, that when we think about open systems, we're definitely thinking about control volumes. Uh, we're thinking about regions of space. I tend to think myself control volumes are much more fundamental. You have to define the region of space before you define the mass, uh, is my kind of view of things. Um, so quite important, and you, you cover these on your fluids course, undoubtedly. Um, but... Um, and we can define all the laws of nature using these type of concepts. And this is the one we're defining for uh, conservation of energy, of course, uh, in its rate form. Uh, it is rate, of course, because you, when you think about it, you know, things are flowing uh, with time. Uh, so you, it's definitely going to be a rate form. I've, uh, I've mentioned this in the notes. Um, you can have a look at it, but that dm dot, if you want to know what that is, you've come across it in your in your uh, fluids lecture. It's a mass flux. It's at the boundary. 
and it's, it's rho AV it usually, uh, rho density times the area times velocity. In, in my term, or in this term, in this course, it would be rho, which is V to the minus one, which is the uh, specific volume. The inverse gives you density. And V, I'll, I'll write it like this, little V in. The normal, normal component of velocity at the boundary. So usually you've got a, uh, if you've got something leaving, then the, you know, you've got a Vn is the velocity component uh, in the normal direction at the boundary. And that's multiplied by dA. Yeah, so that's multiplied by a little area because we're integrating over the, uh, well, it's minus only 2D, it's clearly 3D in, in practice. Uh, and that's what the, that is a, an increment, a small infinitesimal amount of mass flux um, at the boundary. So you, uh, which you met on your fluids course, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, this form of the equation, you're not going to have to use. Uh, it's just, I'm going to get to the form I want to use, and this is the route I'm getting to it. Uh, so, no big difference, really. Well, fundamentally different, certainly. But from the uh, equations that we put down for our closed system, we find we need to uh, we need to add in an extra term uh, to account for the fact that um, mass may be entering a lever in that system. Uh, of course, if there's no mass flow rate at all, then this term is zero. There's no mass flux; it vanishes, and we end up back uh, where we started. Um, as regards our closed systems concerned. So this works, it gives us the, gives us back the equation that we have here, uh, which is, and in, in fact, it kind of tells you that we are talking about control volumes even here. <laughs> uh, although the mass becomes prescribed, of course, when, you, when you've got a fixed mass, so you can talk about a system as well. So well, there you go. Anyways, there we are. That's the, that's the unsteady flow energy equation, the un unsteady flow energy equation. This is what we call that, unsteady flow energy equation. So that's what that is. Uh, most of the time we're interested in machines that are operating under steady conditions, uh, not startup conditions or, you know, uh, where you're switching the thing on, you're switching something on or switching it off, uh, but when it's running. And in that situation, uh, what you tend to find then is that we don't have this term. So for the steady flow energy equation, we have this equation, which is the integral of EDM dot uh, over the boundary of your control volume is equal to Q dot minus w dot so that's the steady flow steady flow energy equation so no u so s f e e steady flow energy equation So the steady flow energy equation, so we get a simplification, and it just means there's no growth or decline of energy inside the system, and all the energies, uh, whatever's, you know, whatever's flowing in is essentially flowing back out again. Uh, uh, and there's no growth in the, uh, in the internal energy. You can liken it to, uh, again, the, the tub in terms of mass. You get a similar thing for uh, conservation of mass. Uh, there's no, there will be no growth in mass, for instance, in a steady state situation, where if you're filling your bathtub and the, tap, well, the taps are putting this, uh, a flow into the bath, but the plug is open and it's, and it's taking out exactly the same amount, then there's no, it, there's no change in the level of the bath. That would be a steady state situation. And exactly the same applies to energy, the same thinking applies to energy uh, where we lose this term. And to be honest, on the course, um, this is the one that we're 
we tend to, we're going to be focusing on. Um, and that is the, um, the the steady flow energy equation because we're interested in looking at machines and how they uh, how, how they behave and understand them, uh, describe them uh, when, during their steady state conditions because that's uh, fairly important running conditions and predominantly they run at those conditions. Uh, if we want to look at the startup of the machine, then we we would have to look at uh, uh, this this equation, the full equation. Uh, but our focus is going to be uh, on this one. Well, that, so that's a fairly quick introduction to there. If you want to find out a bit more about this term, um, uh, it's in the notes, but it's, it just says you just multiply. <laughs> this is the this is the mass flux, and you multiply it by little e. It's the energy flux, so uh, it doesn't probably say much more about it than that. Uh, what I want to do then is get these into a format we're going to use. So this is not really the form. I'm not expecting you to do any integration around the boundary or anything like that. So I want to simplify these forms. Uh, and we're going to see enthalpy coming out, uh, why enthalpy is important uh, in open systems um, uh, in a moment, very quickly. So, okay, we've got, this is our uh, steady flow energy equation. Let's write that again. So steady flow energy equation, uh, which is this equation, integration over the, the boundary uh, of all these little e's, uh, dm dots term, where our dm dot is defined to be this term. And that's equal to uh, q dot minus w dot. Well, what I want to do, I want to, and well, let, before I do that, we our E, remember, uh, specific energy, so total specific energy, uh, and that was equal to U plus a half V squared plus GZ. So let's put that in there then. Uh, we're going to split this W up uh, into two parts. The type of works we're interested in tend to be shaft work and displacement work. So I'm going to write W dot equal to W dot S plus W dot D. So shaft work and displacement work. Uh, we can always, you know, with work, you can generally identify, because you have to design the system after all, uh, what the shaft is and what the, what's been displaced. So, uh, so separating the W into two parts is, you know, not uh, not a big deal. You can easily do that. Um, and the displacement work, we're going to write uh, an expression for that. So let's write this again. It's equal to W dot S plus. Now the displacement work is something that's happening at the boundary of your CV, and it's caused by um, as as mass leaves your system, it's having to do something, it's having to push back the surroundings, uh, or the surroundings uh, pushing pushing it um, as it enters the system. So there's definitely some displacement work going uh, happening at the boundary. You can imagine a little mass entering, you know, you can imagine a little region of mass entering or leaving these systems at the boundary. Uh, and as, as it clearly pushing back the surroundings, it's having an effect on surroundings. Um, and we'd like, the, we'd like our equation to automatically deal with that. And we've already met the, the idea of enthalpy. Uh, and we considered the odd example where it did appear as if enthalpy was somehow magically <laughs> taking account of the displacement work at the surroundings. Um, so we have a, so what I want then, what is the displacement work? It looks a bit, I'll put it down, just let's write it down. It's this integral, it's happening at the boundary, so, so it's over the boundary, clearly. Uh, and it's this thing, let's write it down, it's P, V, displacement work, well, specific displacement work, isn't it? Uh, we had P, um, uh, and we multiply that by dm dot. So th this term here is the displacement work uh, where well it's rate in the, in the form it is, uh, but that occurs at the boundary. Um, 
Um, so, well, you can you can say a little bit more. I could say a little bit more about it. We can see that dm dot is v is v to the minus one velocity times da. Um, so p v dm dot uh, the v's will cancel. The v and the v one will cancel. So over here, if we if I looked at p v dm dot, that would equal well, that goes with that, and we're going to get P times V normal velocity dA. Yes? And if you look at dA multiplied by P, that's a little force. Well, it's come from the traction term. So, uh, so it's a force. Force times velocity is power. Yes? So we can see that this term, there's no more than this, and a power term at the, at the boundary. Uh, the rate of change of work, displacement work, that's coming as the consequence of the fluid leaving and entering the boundary. Uh, the sign, uh, Vn, the sign associated with Vn um, uh, is negative when it's going in and positive when it's going out. We're not going to worry about that. I'm sure you met it on your fluid scores. Uh, so this, ch this change of sign, where, where it's leaving, this dm dot changes sign uh, uh, for positive as it, as it's as the fluid's leaving the control volume negative as it's going in, so it's automatically accounted for the direction. Uh, but what I want to do, what I want to do then is uh, add this, take this. Uh, oh, do apologise, sorry, I've got my sign wrong here. <laughs> oh no, that's right. Sorry, I do apologise. Yeah, you're right. Get mistake there. What I want to do then is uh, put this into there, uh, w, double dot into there, and take this to the other side of the equation. Uh, so let's do that. Um, so we get the integral of uh, E, let's write it down again, gamma CV uh, equal Q dot minus WS dot minus this new term. Gamma C V P V Yeah no. There we go. Okay. Let's take that to the other side. We find this is the integral then of gamma C V E. We've got a DM common DM dot plus P V. dm dot equals q dot minus ws dot. <coughs> so our steady flow energy equation was this. All I've done, nothing really. I've just uh, said, okay, the w, let's take account of the displacement work. That's a, as a consequence of the fluid uh, entering and exiting the, uh, the system, uh, which is this term. Uh, take that to the other side of the equation and we get this. Uh, I'm going to call this EH, by the by. I'm going to call in the notes I call this EH. EH is equal to E plus PV. Let's write what that is. We've got this is E, remember. Uh, you'll see why I'm calling it EH in a second. Uh, but E, so U, and I'm going to put that U plus PV together, if you don't mind. So U plus PV then plus the R, V squared plus GZ. And we can see what this is. Our H value, if you remember, enthalpy H is equal to U plus PV. So this is equal to H plus R, V squared plus GZ. So our equation, let's write that down then. Uh, the equation, uh, our steady state, our steady flow energy equation uh, is EH dm dot equals Q dot minus WS dot. So there's not much, not much has happened. It's just all I've really done here. It just took account of displacement work. Now steady flow energy equation. Um, 
and the difference we will notice the only difference here i've stuck an h on this <laughs> lee there uh, to tell you that the the e value the e the e h value is this term rather than in in the u it's got an h there the only difference is i've got an h there now for enthalpy specific enthalpy um times that uh, and the W, you notice, I've got a W, a shaft, shaft work only. So the displacement work associated with the fluid going in and out of the system is automatically counted for. It's been accounted by the fact that I um, now think of enthalpy. And this is one of the fundamental reasons why enthalpy tends to be more important than U, uh, because it makes things very convenient. If we tabulate the enthalpy, we don't have to worry about, you know, working this term out all the time. Uh, we we just forget about it. The displacement work due to the due to the uh, fluid going in and out of the system is automatically accounted for uh, if we use uh, uh, if we use enthalpy rather than uh, uh, internal energy. Okay. Well, again, the system I have it there is still a little bit too complicated for what we're doing on the course. We're not going to. Uh, this is more fundamental understanding than what we're, I'm expecting you to apply. Um, I'm just giving you the, the full information, if you like. Um, but what I want to do, of course, is put it into a form that we, we are, in fact, going to be able to use it um, in, in practice. Uh, we're not far away from it, uh, in fact. Uh, so this is the steady flow energy equation. In fact, I don't need to do much else as far as the um, as far as the uh, the steady the unsteady flow energy equation, the unsteady flow energy equation, nothing's much really changed. Uh, all this manipulation I've done for the steady flow, I could have done for the unsteady flow, could I not? Uh, so the unsteady, let's might as well put it down since I know it. The unsteady flow energy equation is d by dt of uh, e cv uh, plus. Uh, and now we've got this, so it's this equation now. Gamma CV EH uh, DM dot is equal to Q dot minus WS dot now. This is, so well, that's the unsteady flow energy equation uh, where we've automatically taken account of the displacement work as a consequence of the fluid going in and out of the, uh, of the control volume. Uh, we've already focused on shaft work, and this is important for machines. This is why this is important to us. Uh, uh, if you, I mean, it's just a convenience, really. That's all that's happening. It's just a convenience. Our EH there is equal to H plus half B squared plus GZ. That's all that is, uh, where we've got enthalpy appeared rather than a U value. So internal energy, we've got enthalpy, seems to be the important um uh, property when it comes to dealing with this situation of uh pushing back the environment in some way pushing back the surroundings uh in a displaced manner uh enthalpy captures that quite nicely for you uh, without do, um, to do much work uh, uh, all the work is up <laughs> all the all the work has happened by the fact that we've tabulated h uh, and we can deal with that um okay so this is the this is the general general form then that we're interested in uh but let's have a look at some specific forms um of this equation um so again as i said i put the full form but we are interested more with the steady flow energy equation and um so what we could do with is the situation where we have uh, one entrance and one exit. I think that's uh, that's a, a quite a common situation uh, that we're interested in. So let's have a look at that. So uh, um, uh, simplified form. How about that? Simplified forms of the. Uh, uh, let's do it, steady flow energy equation. So simplified forms um, of that equation. 
Um, where we, what I'm thinking of is a situation of uh, control volume CV where I've got flow coming in um, and I've got flow coming out and M dot uh, so uh, 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 in out in, what's the best way uh, exit uh, entrance or both working with me, yes. <laughs> so M dot, um, I'll just call this one, shall I? This is state point one. Which, well, in fact, this is how we're going to use it anyways. This is state point two. So uh, we have material coming in, and generally we'll, we'll know something about that material, about the properties of that, uh, temperature conditions and so forth. So we might well know uh, its its properties. So if we have to use now a true property rule, we can generally... Of that. So I'm going to call this M.1 and I'm going to call this M.2. So this is the, so I've got a control volume, I've only got two, uh, I've only got uh, one, ex, one uh, entrance point and one exit point for the control volume. Um, now if it's steady flow, if it's steady flow energy equation, then we can say in fact M dot is equal to M.1 is equal to M.2. For steady flow, of course, you know, you can't have any accumulation of things. Uh, so it must be the case that the, the, the mass flow rates must be the same. Uh, so that's a, a, a quite a nice simplification. Um, so what we're going to do then is uh, look at this equation. So we might have shaft work. It's possible we have shaft work. So as a control volume, possible as a shaft. Uh, coming out of this thing, so let's relieve that. It's possible heat transfer is taking place. So we can, have, we can imagine, uh, let's put it abstractly as Q dot, uh, energy flow, energy's flowing in and shaft work uh, is flowing out. We don't need to draw the shaft, we, that's, that, the shaft's going out there. Uh, uh, so we can imagine this type of system. Uh, and the question is then what happens to, uh, what happens to our steady flow uh, energy equation, which is one down here. Uh, well, uh, what happens is you end up with uh, this thing integrated around the brown blue just becomes this. Let's put it. This thing then just becomes M2. Well, I'll put it as M2 dot at the moment. M2, well, okay, let's write it as e M2 dot uh, E2 H minus M2 dot M1 dot uh, uh, E1 dot E8, sorry, E1 H equals uh, Q dot minus WS dot. We'll get there eventually. So let's write it like that. Okay, let's make it M dot now. Let's, we've got this condition, so let's make it M dot uh, E2 H minus E1 H. Uh, equal to Q dot minus WS dot. So that's that's a nice simplification now. Uh, and we can write this as, well, you can put this in if you want. So let's, let's do that. Uh, M dot is uh, times uh, the difference. So we've got it, well, let's write it like this. It's H2 minus H1 plus a half uh, V2 velocity is the S squared minus V1 squared uh, plus G uh, Z2 minus Z1. Z is the height, of course, at the height you measure these things at. So you could have a, you know, a datum and you could be measuring the, the height of these things, Z1. Um, and Z2, of course, uh, so you could be measuring the height, um, particularly, you know, if you've got, um, if you, your control volume is, is the size of a building or something, it could be quite important, the height, and you're looking at a cooling system or something like that, so it is, it is, uh, can be a feature, um, um, so that, that is something you might have, so in the bracket there, yes, so there, and that's equal to Q dot, minus ws dot, the shaft work, 
Uh, so that's again uh, uh, a quite nice simple form. Uh, we can also divide through by the m dot. Uh, so another way of writing this could be this. It's I'll we'll have a night better again. I'll do. I'll go back to this equation. Divide through by the m dot, and we get e two h minus e one h is equal to q dot over m dot minus w s dot over m dot. And we could write this as q minus uh, w s. So there's a nice, there's a quite a simple form of the equation. It looks very much like, very similar to our, we took it off now, but the closed system. Uh, but this is, this is, this is, uh, this is the uh, heat flux per unit uh, kilogram of mass flowing through the system. Okay, so it's like this M dot here is the mass flow rate, of course. Uh, previously, when we were looking at the closed system, we were talking about um, uh, per unit kilogram within the system because that mass didn't change. Uh, in a sense, the mass is not changing here. As it, <laughs> the, mass, uh, the mass in the system is not changing in this case. But what we're talking about M dot here, uh, which is the mass flow rate that's passing through the system. So this is the heat transfer per unit kilogram of mass flowing. Uh, so that's a slight distinction you have to be careful about. And this is the this is the power output. Uh, remember that's the shaft work in, in terms of power it's rate. But this is the, that W there is the work uh, per unit uh, per unit kilogram of mass flowing through the system. So that's what this ratio means. So this is a quite a simple form. Uh, quite often for a lot of our systems, uh, we tend to be focusing on uh, the enthalpies rather than the rather than the mechanical terms. Uh, so for a lot of our machines, uh, these terms generally are quite small. Uh, so an even greater simplification is one that we're going to use quite a lot of is this equation, which is H2 minus H1 is equal to Q uh, minus WS. So this is the probably the most simplest form I can get the equation into. Uh, that's, ne that's neglecting the, um, the velocities which may not be that dis that big. Quite often with thermodynamics, uh, the bit, the energies that are involved in our thermodynamic sh machines are all wrapped up in the H's uh, and the internal energy. You know, we're talking about big temperature differences, lots of energy changes there. And the kind of changes you get in, uh, um, in mechanical terms quite often is, is quite small. There are some machines where that's not true, of course, um, but predominantly, um, certainly we can often be quite more, a lot more interested in, um, in the, uh, the thermodynamic, uh, terms rather than the, the mechanical terms. Uh, so this is a, a, a fantastic simplification, uh, which we'll see a lot of questions on that in the, in the tutorial, uh, in the tutorial, um, uh, in our tutorial sheets and so forth. So that's a, that's quite a nice form. Uh, we also, well, we also have a differential form, I suppose we could look at. Um, uh, and you do use it occasionally, the differential form. This, this, this form is the, um, is of course, a, uh, an int, this is a, a finite form, of course. It's looking at the. Uh, uh, it's looking at what happens in a steady state system, where you've got a constant flow rate in the system. Things settle down, if you like, uh, and uh, you get a quite a nice simplification where, if you can ne neglect ve velocities and uh, and uh, height differences in your system, you can you can get that. So that's quite a that's quite a useful thing. Um, but also, I suppose we can uh, we can write it as uh, uh, a differential form. Um, uh, 
uh, which uh, we're using now the fact that we've got our uh, our um, we can multiply throughout by dt, of course, in in this in this in this case, uh, which is one thing we could do. Um, um, well, yeah, okay, let's let's do it. Uh, so, okay, we've got our. Um, so, what we're imagining now is a a, a very small uh, change, a, a bit of mass, aren't we? This is what we were imagining doing. Uh, so this is the full e equation, um, and we can multiply it throughout, as I say, by dt. Um, and what do we get? Uh, well, we we've got uh, well, we get this. Let's uh, let's do it then. We're going to. Have, it's going to be this. This is what we get. It's d uh, times uh, h. Uh, well, yes. Uh, d plus a half v squared. So this is for a steady state. Uh, this is for the steady state system. So v squared uh, plus gz uh, uh, is equal to um, uh, dq. So this is the minus dw d omega z. So this is the so this is the differential form. Um, of the equation uh, and well if you have the situation uh, remember that h is equal to h is equal to u plus pv that's our that's what we mean by h of course uh, if you have the situation where um, where there's not much thermodynamics there's no real thermodynamics happening so if we have the situation where uh, um, the Q uh, is equal to zero, and we have no shaft works, for instance. Um, we have that situation. We also have uh, no real in change in the internal energy. Then uh, we end up with an equation that something you might have met before, which is this equation, D. Uh, P, I'm going to put P over rho, let's write it like that. P over rho, where PV plus uh, half V squared plus GZ uh, is equal to zero. So this is a, a much simplified form of the equation. Uh, I'm not going to spend any time on this one, I'm just introducing it just out of interest. Uh, you've met this on your fluids course. This is a course that this thing is equal to a constant. If you if you integrate along a streamline, uh, you get p p over rho uh, plus a half v squared plus g z uh, is equal to a constant. Uh, this is Bernoulli's equation, of course, uh, which you may have, you may have. Equation. So Bernoulli's equation, um, which has no thermodynamics in it in a sense, it's just uh, it's kind of mechanical because uh, we've got rid of our shaft work, um, we've uh, got rid of it all heat transfer. There's no intrinsic any changes in the intrinsic internal energy, uh, so temperature effects are, 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 are being removed. Uh, and we do have a, uh, interestingly, this term that's come from the enthalpy. But that term, uh, we can see where this term's coming from. We know it's coming from the fact that it's trying to push back uh, the surroundings or overcome the pressure uh, that's that's uh, resisting it usually from the surroundings and there's some displacement work going on there. Um, and this is the differential form. Uh, and I'm only mentioning it in passing. Uh, of the um, of the uh, of the steady flow energy equation uh, in that case. Uh, so, anyways, I thought I'd, I'd mention that as the last thing I'm going to mention. But the main the equation that's of interest to us is going to be this one. We're going to apply this one in all the types of systems, uh, and I'm going to I'm going to show how to apply this equation to uh, to the machines. That we we're interested in on the course, 
Um, uh, sometimes we will find that uh, there's more than uh, one entrance and more than one exit. So we do find there's a little bit of a complication. Uh, this is the simplest thing I can get it down to. Uh, but we, we won't be using this form of the equation. We won't be integrating around the boundary. We're either going to have, um, and the way you get that situation is on each, you know, on each exchanges where you can have more than one source of um, entrance of, of energy, particularly if you want to exchange energy between cold and hot substances, uh, which is that's what each, each exchanger does. Uh, then you'll have hot water or hot hot water hot substance coming in one uh, 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 entrance, and you'll have coal coming in the in the other one. Uh, there's no mixing, but um, that, that's a situation where uh, uh, the same equation applies. You just you just end up with an extra 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 terms. You just don't have the uh, you just end up with extra terms. Um, at the entrance and exit of the additional, just get some two additional terms, in fact, um, which is not a big deal. And we'll, we'll look at that when we get onto it. So I think I'll stop that there. Uh, unfortunately, there's been a lot of equations for this lecture, uh, but the next lecture I'll, I'll apply these equations and hopefully it'll become a little bit clearer. And as I said, a lot of this you can kind of forget about. It's really just for your fundamental understanding of why is it that we end up with enthalpy in your in your energy equations when it comes to open systems and uh, the reason of course is that um, we're pushing back the boundaries uh, overcoming the atmospheric or whatever ex whatever surroundings there is um, uh, which uh, a displacement work is involved in that uh, and fortunately we don't even have to think about it because all we'd be interested in is quite often we're interested in just the enthalpies at the at the the entrance and the exit of our control volume. Uh, so we get them from our steam tables, maybe if we if the tabulator, you know, we might have a formula for that. If we're talking about gases, uh, we haven't done gases yet. We're going to do them, um, and a lot of our machines are adiabatic. This turns out to be zero, and quite often we're interested in finding out what the work is. Um, if we know the mass flow rate, we can get the powers. Um, so these equations are really quite useful because you can get a lot out of them. You can analyze the machines. Uh, very powerful equations indeed, but you can, you can just by knowing what's at the, at the exit and the, and the entrance of uh, the conditions there, you can figure out what the machine's doing, what kind of work you're getting out of it, this type of thing. So it's really quite a powerful thing. Um, a little bit complicated to get to, I admit, uh, but a gift to, to apply, which is what I'm going to be asking you to do uh, on this course. So with that, I'll say goodbye and I'll uh, see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.